enjoy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Guys, um, thank you for spending your Saturday afternoon with this dark, yeah, totally. long binge. <laughs> a long watch, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I'm sure you guys are probably quite overwhelmed, so I'm going to ask a few questions at the top so you can process what you've just seen, and then we will open out to audience questions. So I was wondering if you guys could tell us a little bit about how you first heard about this story and got involved in making this project. All right. Basically, I mean, everybody in Israel know this story. Um, so in terms of how you heard about it, it's like everybody heard about it. Um, although I must say when the murder actually uh, took place, I wasn't in Israel, so I wasn't right. too involved. And uh, then a few years later, um, Ari, my co-director, my, my co the mm -hmm. one who did it with me, and we're just sitting and he was uh, he's a journalist. He, I came from the, I, I'm a filmmaker, he's a journalist. We did it together, but he came to me and, uh, and he just said my like my paper just uh, asked me to interview uh, a few private investigators uh, investigators who actually uh, claimed that uh, Tahir's uh, I mean uh, classmates killed her. And he told me about this story and it sounded crazy. Um, and then we got a bit into it and then we found out uh, like a, um, it's a weird story because I mean a girl was murdered in a in a in a closed uh, I mean, bathroom, which is locked from within. Nobody saw anything. There's no uh, evidence that connects nobody to the murder. And into that void, I mean, lots of uh, uh, stories can come in. Mm. Um, and we saw how the stories came in. By then, we have no idea about the uh, AK and AH story. Um, but we went into it. We got a broadcaster in, and uh, we just started to follow the, the story in. But what uh, actually, I mean, was the main interest was the actual how, how people can tell stories about a thing which they have no idea about. I mean, they did have a lot. I mean, they knew everything. I mean, everything. But uh, again, it's like a, it's a huge void to fill with stories, mm. and it's still filled with stories. I mean, everything you saw is in here is uh, basically it's true, but it's stories. I mean, nobody knows really? who did it. Yeah. Um, I'll just add. I think a, a quite interesting thing about what you asked is that in a, in the Israeli context. This is a retelling of something that was retold a lot of many, many times. But, you know, I think we all felt that never really got a lot of justice, not from the mm -hmm. media, not from the system. And within the Israeli perspective, this is, uh, I'd say, probably the vastest, broadest retelling of this. Um, we're very happy that it's coming to, you know, international audience because for them it's completely fresh. So I guess that I, I know that maybe 80% of the people here are like Israelis in any case, so they know it. Um, but I in a sense, it's like people around us knew the story, everyone he dealt with it. This is just, uh, yeah. I'd say, the broadest, most but again, it's fair the story retelling of, of this story. People know, like, you know, a few lines about it yeah. mm -hmm. and no more. But, uh, it was done in a very populistic way, also by the media. There were a few movies that never really did justice. There was never any movie. No, but they were shot called little thing. It's not no, like there was, like, news yet. Uh, <laughs> with their, I mean, there were newspapers, headlines, or, uh, you right. know, uh, news and TV, but nothing. Uh, and with that in mind, with that aim of really telling the story thoroughly, how did you approach the sheer kind of mass of information that you had to put across? Like, as a filmmaker, how did you plan that across these four episodes? Uh, again, even before you, you make uh, you make this, like, a very structured I mean, narrative, which actually came to place very early, I mean, I, mean, uh, I think... Even if you if you take other documentaries, people do usually. I mean, the stories evolved uh, very in, in late stages. Mm. Surprisingly, we had an idea and it came through. Uh, we were open to change it, but and it changed and then came back to the I mean, original idea. But um, in terms of investigating, it's just like uh, we took a car, we drove to Katrin, which is like a few hours drive. It's in the tip of the country. Uh, for like hundreds of time, and we read uh, I mean, thousands of documents, but we met, I think we met with uh, more than 200 people who were involved in the case, and uh, picked, you know, the people to actually interview, mm. and there was lots of interviews that got out, um, usually because, because the people were, uh, were not interesting enough, not because of anything else, but uh, mm. were not charismatic enough. But. And I think what's really striking about those interviews is how open people are with you, especially her parents. I wondered how you kind of approached that with them and how you got them to be so open with you. They were actually the first, I mean, uh, people we met. I mean, we went to the parents uh, first of all, 
uh, we ask for their permission and uh, their guidance. We get really close. We're still very close, uh, by the way. We're like uh, Ilana is probably one of the biggest supporters of of the film. Of the yeah, film. She was dying in the in the way, but he also was a huge supporter and. Uh, and he actually saw me in a, a rough cut of the film before right. he died. And, uh, um, so we had a good connection with them. What is surprising, I think, for every uh, filmmaker, journalist, is that people love to talk. I mean, especially the, Israelis. Especially Israelis, <laughs> I guess. But, but even the policemen, I mean, uh, so we had like three policemen in the, in the show. Um, they were like ex-policemen, so, so they could talk, but they wanted to talk. And the policemen who were still in the police who couldn't talk because of like a be um, bureaucracy, they wanted to. Mm. And everybody wanted to talk. We had no, like, uh, nobody actually shut the door at us. Or, mm. and with the I mean, the, the only uh, person who didn't talk was AK, yeah. which we met a few times, um, but she never wanted to get on camera. Um, but for the good and for the bad, nowadays she's actually... Now she wants to talk. She, now she wants to talk very, I mean, freely, and she does it, like, uh, all the time. Um, I wanted, I was going to come back to AK at the end, but since you brought it up, where is AK now? What's she doing? Oh, she's on Facebook. She, yeah. She, right. Yeah. I mean, she, um, she claims she's innocent. She might be. Um, I don't know. Um, and, uh, but she's out there, and... Uh, mm. I mean, she's taking a very, I mean, odd approach to it because um, she's taking it in. Like, uh, after the series went out, we thought, I mean, we were scared about what's going to, I mean, to happen to her. And we actually, I mean, we were in contact with her. We told her it's going to go out. You should know, I mean, uh, and be ready. And she took all her, I mean, um, drawings out to the internet, to the Instagram. Um, wow. Which is kind of... which is an element of... of um I, you know, I won't go into psychoanalyzing or anything, um, and it's obviously a very complicated issue in any case, uh, but there is obviously some, an element of that, uh, the need for that sort of attention, you know, if the story is fabricated or not. Or, not, or she wanted to prove her innocence, I don't know, but uh, it's, uh, it makes sense either way, but, uh, but we actually thought she's going to go, uh, I mean, undercover, because she's just couldn't, I mean, nobody knew, could have known who she is really, but she got up. And um, the footage that you have of the interrogations and also the scenes in the prison cells, how on earth did you get access to that? We stuff? got them uh, firstly, I mean, from like uh, leaks, but right. then um, everything with um, Roman Zador, we actually got like a court, I mean, approval just like two months before the show came out right. um, to show. So, I mean, we, we would have shown it anyway, uh, even if it wasn't legal, um, but, but we got uh, approved. And then, I mean, AK interrogations and stuff, it's all leaks, it was never approved, mm. approved but that's why we have to, like, uh, transcript it, and we couldn't actually show the actual footage, although we've got it. Because, uh, I mean, in Israel there's a law, I mean, you can, uh, if you get leaks, you can, uh, you can publish, I mean, text, but you can't publish video, I have no idea what, right. why, but uh, mm. that's the rule. Um, I'm going to ask just one more and then we're going to throw it out to the audience. Um, so we were talking about this before actually, but the film visually is very interesting and you actually have an art director which is quite rare mm -hmm. for a documentary. I was wondering if you could talk a bit about that process and some of the inspirations behind the um, visual look of the film. I mean for me, I think it was the, the main issue to go into. I mean, um, I came into from, from filmmaking, from uh, I mean, music videos, from uh, commercials, uh, films, whatever. I mean, came from the aesthetic world into it. Um, I have huge interest in investigating, so it was also a thing, but uh, I mean, the narrative structure and the aesthetics was the main, I mean, I mean approach we took and, uh, and was the main thing in terms of like uh, what we spend money off and stuff. Um, in terms of, uh, I don't know, where we took stuff, everywhere. I, mean, uh, I, th I think that everything tries to reference to the, because the, I just discussed it with her a bit, uh, the, the um, textual and, you know, like the phonetic approach of it all. The so phonetic approach was actually very surprising. I mean, we wanted it because I'm very close to our art director. We, I mean, we worked on every commercial music video I've done all my life. We're working together, I mean, uh, since we were like uh, 18, actually, from the oh. army. Uh, Tal Baltuch is, um, is the best in Israel. I mean, I've, yeah, I mean, I'm lucky to be with him. And what struck us is the... We like the font David, which is fun. Uh, I mean, in Hebrew, there's a font named David. 
And uh, surprisingly, it's, it's kind of symbol. It symbolizes Israeli bureaucracy to its. Uh, no, actually, I mean, usually the Israeli bureaucracy is uh, in Ariel. No, Ariel, Ariel is the new. Ariel is like the modern. We talk about documents, but um, what struck us? I mean, um, we wanted to make the film like in David, and, uh, and then, I mean, ninety percent of the of the actual documents we got into were in David, which is amazing for us. Um, so the actual approach to make, uh, I mean, a lot of text, I think, came from it. And, uh, and we had a mission, I mean, to, to make a film or a TV show where people will actually see, especially in the fourth episode, there's like uh, sequences of like five minutes, mm. only text. Um, people, I mean, the broadcaster thought we were crazy, but it went on, on really good. Uh -huh. Yeah, in, in a way, I guess that like, obviously there was a, v sometimes there's, there was some sort of void where it comes to footage that could use and not use and a lot of the information you would get in was text based in any case and when you deal you know thematically with the system a bureaucratic system the approach i guess was kind of like getting into the texture of text and really depending on it and making it almost like a visual language of the series and it's actually interesting to know how it translates to an audience that doesn't read Hebrew at all. Totally. And, and by the it's way, it's almost I mean, like an academic experience. Like you literally sit for two hours, two two hours and twenty, and read. Yeah, and we had, um, I mean, uh, tons of. Uh, um, I mean, we, we made tons of research about how to to put the text into, I mean, uh, film, and every bit of text you see, I mean, actually was printed like ten times, scanned. Uh, mm -hmm. We done t I mean, lots of things to it. Put it on other paper. Uh, we died. We made a lot of like uh, actual I mean, filmmaking text. We actually filmed the text, and wow. so it was fun. I mean, for us, it's it's like uh, it's the having fun of it because I mean the story is so dark. Yes. Um, <laughs> and and for me to go back in the room and actually deal with I mean uh, it's nonsense because you actually deal with text, so it was fun. You rather deal with printers than with people. <laughs> like, go I rather deal with people, documents. but if you do too much. <laughs> um, do we have any questions from the audience? I've got some more, if not. Yeah? Do you think there's going to be another episode now after... Sorry. Do you think there's going to be another episode after it's been out in Israel and it's gotten all this feedback and, you know, everything? Do you think uh, only if something is really happen? drastic will happen. Uh, the broadcaster really wants um, a new episode. So, but we, I mean, we think something should happen. I mean, uh, there was a huge discuss, I mean, discussion after the series. I mean, for like, the first two months, it, it controlled the media. I mean, and it became such a, I mean, a huge thing, but nothing really happened. It's just, I mean, talk. Um, and I can't see any reason, I mean, to make another episode about practically not nothing. Maybe things were left out that you would have not put No, in. because, I mean, the series is about, uh, I mean, those stories, those narratives. And, uh, it's about the fact and that And how you believe in those out. stories. And again, and, and, and if we don't have another story to tell, or we can make uh, thematically something that can go with the case, we leave it to the press, and the press deals with it till now every day. Yeah, so, they exploit. Uh, I think I think something about this case, especially in Israel, it's been so exploited by so many people, and it's so hard to do justice to it. And I think we are very happy and proud that we did something that approaches it thematically and creatively and holistically as a whole. And then just once you kind of put it out, suddenly the media and the press is doing, this, again, the same thing that they've always done. They keep on exploiting it, you know? And also the people that are involved. But yeah, which is fine. I mean, I, uh, if you think about it, I mean, last week was um, the main headline of the biggest newspaper in, uh, in Friday was uh, that the police actually lost their ears, I mean, cell phone, which was an, I mean, it's a, it's a, I know it's, n it's not a huge evidence, but supposedly it can be a huge evidence. I mean, I actually know what's in the phone, but, they lost it, um, and there's supposed to be a retrial, and uh, they lost the phone, and such things, and it makes huge headlines, which mm. is basically, I mean, funny, because there's no real reason. And AK is like on the main headlines of the all the newspapers on the last few weeks, I have no idea why she's, she, she came back to life. Yeah, now the headlines are, is AK suing us? You know, like, that's the headline now. Right. For example, that they're like, you know, but it's not that it will go anywhere. It's just like... It didn't happen, no, but... but you know, but, it's yeah, some more ads it. there, you know, at the end. It's kind of like yeah. media does what it does and when it exploits stories. What do you think it is about this case that has made people so obsessed with it? Uh, the void. I mean, uh, the actual void where you can't tell what happened. Uh, 
in that cell. I mean, uh, the killing of a kid is all is always, I mean, very emotional. Mm -hmm. But if she gets killed, like um, in that place, in the Twin Peaks, I mean, uh, environment, uh, um, Katsurin is also yeah, a very small town. It's it's actually in the tip of the country, in Ramat Golan, which is, uh, I mean, for us, uh, it's funny. It's it's like I have no idea what's like the British equivalent, but. Uh, it's it's an actual Twin Peaks. I mean, for right. and, and it, I mean, so it makes a lot of uh, you know a mystique around it's it. It's like death in Cornwall. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she got murdered in school. And I think actually, what brought people I mean um, into it and also after the show was Tahir's mother. Mm, and yeah. she's so powerful. Yeah. I mean, uh, I and mean, everybody goes around her. I mean, and, he, and and she never lets down. I mean, she's an amazing uh, woman with lots of strength, and and she wants to know the truth. And she's very, I mean, um, uh, she, she's huge. I mean, she, she's like, uh, she's very, uh, what can I say? I mean, uh, anti, I mean, government, anti police, anti anything. Yeah, she's almost like, but, but, but she's very charismatic, yeah. Um, I mean, in terms of it, because she came from the, from nothing. And right. she was never like this before. And it like turned her into life. And, it's a, and it's a car, it's pretty, there's something tragic, like we won't get into her psychology as well, but in a way it became um, her vocation, mm. you know, and it became the thing, the thing that she does, and she's a great advocate to the, that search of the truth, even if she knows that you won't necessarily get to it, you know mm. what I mean, or, and I think you probably feel that her support was a huge thing for us, no? Um, totally. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, she also, she's the biggest supporter of like the Roman Zadov is not guilty mm. like she is mm. the leading of you know the leader of that that, that movement you know what I mean? so yeah and by the way I mean she had no reason to because uh, at the, uh, like at the beginning they said they had like uh, I don't know DNA evidence and stuff which they didn't but she actually felt it from day one which is kind of odd I mean uh, mm. so people say like mother knows uh, and she did know I mean uh, I'm not sure it's like a rule but she actually had the feeling and she knew what's going on she's very smart yeah. Have we got any more questions from the audience? I, I was just, yes, I was very interested in the, in the Lana side of it. Um, she did feel from the very beginning, it was clear from the film, but um, how, um, what, what's the, I mean, clearly the, the, she saw through the evidence or thought she did, um, but were there any other people in court at the beginning who felt that and just didn't come out, or, or was she really alone? No, I mean, a lot of people, when it came to court, I mean, there was a... Uh, she took some people with her. I mean, uh, mm. there were some advocates. Although, um, I mean, I mean, it's surprising because uh, the police really didn't have a lot to go with, mm. and they and, and they went to court, which is surprising. I mean, it happens mm. here as well, I guess, and in America and, and everywhere. Um, but uh, there's a sense, in, I think, the police police in most countries work on the assumption that people want a resolution, and the quicker the mm -hmm. resolution mm -hmm. of a, mur a murderer put away. That, that's it. You know. Yeah. They, they do. I mean, they want people to move people, on. People want people want the void to be filled. I Absolutely. think that's kind of the, and the vulnerability. And in the smaller, I mean, scale of it, uh, I mean, I really think those policemen. I mean, you just saw are, are I mean, are they're good people. I mean, uh, they're honest. Mm -hmm. They're not bad. Yeah, they're doing their job. And they actually <laughs> believe the men who did it. Why they believe the men? Uh, be because they could get mm -hmm. promotion or because mm -hmm. whatever. It doesn't really matter because it was Russian or because. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like in Israel, most of the wrongly convicted people, if you they know, I mean, mostly are Arabs. I mean, uh, basically, if someone gets killed, it's or their, I mean, uh, husband, and like if a woman gets killed, it's her husband or an Arab. Yeah, it's like that. I mean, there's no in between. Twenty-year-old uh, African American in the state is kind yeah, of like so, the vulnerable. So he's uh, also was. Um, so I have no idea why. I mean, they thought so. I mean, severely it was him. By the way, I mean, the the head of the investigation told us. I mean. Uh, uh, not on camera, um, but uh, but he told us that he actually thought Roman didn't do it until he confessed. He thought it's like bullshit. I mean, because they arrested lots of people, and he's like, oh, he didn't do it. And you can see he didn't do it, and then he confessed, um, and it turned him around. Mm -hmm. But what's also surprising is that I mean that uh, I mean uh, head of the investigation, police commissioner, is like a very I mean uh, he actually thinks Roman didn't do it like he says he's done it. He has like an, uh, he has another theory that has a no forensic theory. You mean. Not forensic, but he says like he thinks Roman actually uh, was a pedophile. I, I don't know why he think. I mean, it's like that. there's no evidence for it, and 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 uh, and and his uh, 
you know, his uh, wife just gave birth, so he couldn't have sex with her. So he went to the uh, girls' I mean, bathroom. And then Tahir saw him there. Where, I mean, so he tried, I don't know, to uh, sneak pick her. He saw her. And then uh, she screamed and he killed him, which is a whole different, I mean, uh, um, script. It has nothing to do with what Roman says, which is the only thing they have against him. Mm. And he says, I think that's how he, I mean, how he did it. So I said, why didn't you take it to court? I mean, you're the head of the investigation. He's, because he said, I mean, he said other things, and uh, we have nothing else. So, but they do believe it's him. I mean, uh, mm. But just coming back to the original question, I think it was, I, Ilana did have um, a lot of allies within the story. So she was like the leading force of mm, getting to the truth. Quick. But she, you know, there were a lot of like interrelationship between like her and Sadovsky, and you know, it's, it just didn't make the, the film because it wasn't really yeah. relevant. Mm. But she always has a, yeah. a group of confidence. Um, Does her confidence. husband agree with her? No. no he that's a good. No. That's a strong story. So presumably, it must have affected their relationship in the last years of his life. It did. I mean, it was. Uh, I think uh, it's funny, but it was the majority of the relationship was about that debate. Um, but he thought Roman did it, again, with no evidence. Um, Roman, I mean, Roman by did it. I mean, nobody knows. Uh, he might actually did it, but, I mean, uh, Shmuel had no evidence. He didn't really care. He said, like, give me, uh, give me peace. I mean, he did it. They say he did it. And just, I uh, don't want to know anything else. So they had that argument, but they still were, they were like a lovely couple. We've got time for one more question, if anyone has anything from the audience. Um, I'll ask then. So you guys have said you're not going to make another episode. Are you going to go on to make uh, a film about another mystery, or what's next for you, you guys? You should ask your thumb. Yeah, I mean, surpri <laughs> <laughs> no, surprisingly, uh, um, we actually we're uh, Working in production. On yeah, we're in production of like uh, um, the second. Uh, I mean, uh, season, season under this brand, but a different yeah, case, a whole different. I mean, story. Um, same much. partners ish. Yes. It's like they really want well, us I mean, to. Yeah, all the crew is the same crew, but uh, no. I mean, partners like as broadcasters, like they, right. Yotam and his and, and Ari, who co-directed this, they they they're getting now into research on a new case, and I think the appetite from the broadcaster was really big to kind of okay, let's perpetuate or continue the brand so we said no we definitely don't want to go into like another Tahir related thing this is part of the past but he'll tell you what we have a new story right which is uh, it, it, I mean it's about a, a huge mystery about a serial killer I mean it's a huge story a much more complex uh, much older to break it down it's like six or seven cases ish of murder with women and fourth kids so it's like let's say seven cases that are more or less through our perspective some people from the force feel it's again an unjust um um confession based murder case convictions and uh basically and there sentence, was like a serial actually, it looks murder. like there's an mo a similar mo that ran through all these cases and there was one investigator in the force that always felt it's a serial killer that was operating in israel but the, you know, like the, it's unprecedented. It would it never happen in Israel. So the system actually rather to see it as like single kind of project by project murders. Um, and we're trying to tie it all up as like that serial killer case that was never really told mm. and was put under like was shoved under the rug. Um, so that's more. Yeah, it's a huge story of like injustice and uh, mystery. It's really interesting. Well, I can't wait to see it. Thank you so much for <laughs> doing this. Thank you. Thank you.